Welcome to the next segment of my series dedicated to learning to be nice first upon explicated in the first video to you why it's a draw without any pawns next. Let's talk about the general concepts regarding situations in which the defenders got pawned. Let's start with the basics. Since eating the pawn simply believe to withdraw, the only long-term win chances are pawning stops of pawns for really advances in order to forcibly keep it on the board and then the attackers remaining forces force the king closer to a corner enabling the pass to force the link of his cohorts establishing a mating pattern before queen interposes that it'd be a disaster because one knight will be obligated to idle in front of a pawn. Much of the play of this kind of end game is gonna involve just the kings and the other knights so isolating these three pieces the key to taking heat on the right mating ideas the objective is to set up a situation with a four stalemate but instead of completely trapping the king it happens to be a draw in regular chess the attacker wants to leave an extra space and activate the passive steed to complete a checkmate so now you see what the right objective is question is the king and one knight effectively surround the enemy without the second knight's presence it normally can't be forced on an 8x8 eight eight or 7x7 seven seven, since the king avoids being cornered or stalemated by swinging around the knight's premises but in special cases the attacker achieves it by exploiting the king's poor placement the most practical kind of formations to master or a class I classify as the fourth diagonal. It's an important geographical threshold telling whether or not the king is trapped. Both their evaluations depend on who is to move. Compare the corresponding third and fifth positions and observe the not reciprocal zoos. Once you learn the ideas of king and knight versus king, it's time to apply the concept to two knights versus a pawn in real chess start with positions where the passive force is far from the action so it has little influence on the normal coordination of the active forces. This is an example for you. It's a fourth diagonal formation and the passive force is the same number of moves from attack in the corner as it takes for the pawn to advance to promotion. These are the makings for the most basic sort of mating pattern. Notice that if it's black to move, white wins rather quickly. Otherwise, it's much slower, it's rather tricky. Before we get into those more complex processes, let's finish going over the simplest concepts. In this position, the pawn's two moves from promotion, the knight's two moves from controlling the corner. This spawns a notion why it can win like before, but there's a slight problem. The knight needs to reach the corner from a specific spot, which is blocked by its king. This is solved by transforming the formation into the reflected variation where it's not. In this position, the pawn's two moves from promotion and the knight is two moves from controlling the corner of the spawns an ocean. It's decisive like before, but there's a big problem in the end. The queen's instantly interposing. This is an exception to the concept I call the corner check. The position is drawn, but see in the opposite corner, a forced win is possible because there's no disruption caused by the pawn's promotion. It's not an immediate obstacle. In this position, it would seem like white could implement the previous process, but there's a surprise defense. The pawn becomes a knight and stops threats. There's the same problem with the pawn a step back, but there will be alternative patterns. Let's not yet examine those and focus on positions with less impact from the passive horse. Here, white can win with the corner check like before, but there's a quicker method. Instead of attacking the first square, the knight attacks the second, establishing a new pattern. But since there's no force check on the second square, the horse has got to have one extra tempo compared to the first method. You can better understand it in this example where the pawn's two moves from promotion and the passive horse needs three to attack the corner, but just two to attack the second. Notice that this doesn't satisfy either method. The knight is too slow no matter how hard white tries to force a situation where there will be a tempo gain on the second square. It fails. The problem is that white can't respond to king g8 with king h6 since it's got to prevent escape on the f7 square. Compare it to the baiting process in the a8 corner where triangulation maneuvers are possible. So, so far we've introduced two different methods and established exceptions to corner check which can happen when a knight's pawn promotes to a queen or a queen pawn promotes to a knight. <laughs> Once you've mastered fourth diagonal applications and triangulation, then by now without calculation you should be able to identify these two mating patterns and understand the problems in the second method causing the knight to need extra time to accomplish matters. This is a good example for mastering the mating patterns. The knight is fast enough to satisfy him, including a new one where the passive horse can reinforce control of the third square, allowing a new pattern to be enforced. So now we've established a third mating process if the passive horse is one move away from attacking the third square from a corner and the pawn is two or more from advancing to promotion, then checkmate is forced. Remember this position. It was a draw because you'd have to force a check on the second square, which was impossible unless the active force abandoned its duty compared to these two examples where the passive force can reinforce control of the third square, allowing a new pattern to be enforced. Just the first and second methods work in this example, but it's important that the horse has one extra tempo than normal because of the queening diagonal. White can't block it, though the pawn is not promoting time to draw against either pattern. Now we've mastered winning with these three patterns, and we can understand why exceptions happen to the first method and why the second requires extra time. Next, let's take an inventory of all the mating prospects for each pawn location. Okay, none of the three main mating methods work against a pawn that's one move for promotion. The diagram on the left satisfies the conditions of method one, but it fails to a knight under promotion. The diagram on the 
rights and move too short to satisfy the conditions of method two, because whenever this position happens, black can make sure it's black to move. If black allows this position with white to move, then white has main three beginning with 92. There's also a unique mating process involving usage of the pawn as an obstructor of its king. It's not forceful in the A1 corner regions of these examples, but makes forceful in the H1 corner areas where there's not enough space for the defender's king to ample. You can also do some maneuvers in the H1 corner against a G2 pawn, but not against a pawn on H2. There are special mates involving the defender's king in front of a rook's pawn, which will be explained soon. So here's a unique mate with the F2 pawn impedes its king, even with an extra file to maneuver on. It's the same thing, but the passive force has more impact than before. Notice that if you add one more file, then there won't be a forced mating process. You should understand these diagrams for pawns. One move from promotion. Next, let's look at two. We already went over the mating prospects and methods for all these corners except the one closest to the pawn. Let's go over them here. White has nice control over Black's king trapped in the corner, but unfortunately there's no forced win. The pawn's a problem and conflicts with the normal process. White can try enticing the pawn to g2 with a mate similar to what we viewed before, but there's no way to force it unless White's king could leap to h3 through a vortex. And note that the pawn's control of f2 prevents the checkmate we saw against the f2 pawn. There's no method to win here. It's a draw. Same thing against the bishops or central pawns. There are stalemate issues and the pawn a lot. Here king g1 is the move to draw, but king h1 gets trapped and black has to pawn push. The rook's pawn is different. Remember checkmate with one knight in my composition? That means in this example the passive steed doesn't need defense. That knowledge is essential for winning against a pawn on the edge. There's also this mating process. The knights make a fence and the pawn doesn't influence enough to stop threats. Before we go on to pawns three moves for promotion, let's review two and go over the different winning zones. The diagonal formations tend to be the most thematic, so it kind of makes sense to take an inventory of how each is evaluated. In a king and knight versus king in game, the fourth diagonal formations are reciprocal zoot swings, but when factoring in the existence of the pawn and the extra knight, the defender's king can become restricted from additional squares, so often a higher number diagonal formation will contain the same ideas as the fourth diagonal formation of king and knight versus king. When mating in the a1 corner against a g3 pawn, the fourth diagonal formation is a reciprocal zoot. Pass, of course, can't force many deviations, but when the pawns on f3 or e3, the key reciprocal zoot swings are fifth diagonal formations, since the passive force influences critical spaces. To the h8 corner, the passive force is not as close to the fifth diagonal formations or draws no matter who is to move, and it's the fourth formations that are mutual zooks. Against a rook's pawn, two moves for promotion, there's a tremendous winning zone, it's just one big one connected instead of two broken unconnected. It's actually pretty easy to understand with the key position method, I'll go over the specifics in the next vid. Against a rook's pawn, three moves for promotion, it's a general win, the whole board's a winning zone, the top corners are mating corners, but at the bottom you gotta force the pawn to move. Against the knight's pawn, three moves from promotion, the winning zone is still broken, but a bishop's pawn is a general win with the exception of a stalemate shelter in the closest corner, an e4 pawn is a general win wherever. Against any pawn that's four moves for promotion, all corners are mating corners, but there is only one general win against a central bishop's or rook's pawn, it's a general draw against a knight's pawn. Note that this is the only time where all four corners are mating corners, but it's not a general win. This is because pawns are harder to play against when they're further from the center, but against the edge pawn you can sack the passive knight to trap the defender. I'll make separate vids for winning against each individual pawn, but for the rest of this, just process positional concepts. Pawns are harder to play against when they're further from the center, with the exception of the edge pawn, which can help trap the defender. 